And welcome back to Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show. See, I got it right this time. All about cigars. And of course, we're only a couple days from Christmas, so I hope everybody's uh, been uh, nice and Boy, not naughty. Wrong. Remember, we're still open for last minute gifts, yeah. don't forget. Well, again, for another week, we're very happy to have Renee back with us. Hi, Renee. Yeah. But, yeah. This, but this time, Renee has brought us a uh, super duper, super duper duper deal here. And, uh, a great cigar for not a lot of money in a, in, a, in a presentation box that is a gift unto itself. And it has a story behind it that is... Uh, I'll let Renee explain. Yeah, well, I'm going to. I'm not even going to attempt to explain this story. Yeah. I don't want to explain it. <laughs> yeah, even the, even the box show. has a story. Yeah, because I think I think this uh, this story has more curves than the Mississippi River. Can we light? It does. It does. Let's light like Let's light like tea. This, this cigar is called the Buena Vista. The Buena Vista. Which Buena Vista means? Oh, am I going to go over? Oh, Buena Vista. The name yeah. was uh, taken from the famous jazz band from Cuba, the Buena Vista Social right. Club. Social Club, yeah, yeah. seen them. And um, have their seen them? Actually, the whole project was developed for a team of people that was involved with the Habanos in uh, Cuba. So mm. that's when it, the story is interesting. Mm. But Atia, uh, tell them a little bit about the cigar, and then I'll go with a little bit of the story, please. Yes. Great job. Everybody, light up. We throw a lot of smoke over here. Um, <laughs> it's a gnat, like, he's attacking me. Okay, um, this is the Buena Vista. The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Habano. The binder is Dominican and the filler is Dominican. And we have a lot of sizes. Uh, we have the Corona Larga. Currently, we're gonna be smoking the Corona. Sublime Pyramid, Double Robusto, and a Petite Pyramid. You definitely have to explain the sizes. I can't, <laughs> I can't let this go. No, absolutely. Uh, you hold trust on. What? Tia, your arms look like you got in a fight with a tiger. <laughs> and You're lost. so mean. <laughs> oh God, my God. Cut it out. <laughs> Yell at him right now. So cut it out, Scott. It's Christmas. Don't do Don't that. Don't you have any Christmas love in you? I look very nice. Yes, you do. That's I didn't say you didn't look shirt. nice. It's the only one I have. She got caught in the washer. You have to tell everybody. Got caught in the washer. No. It's, it's the only supposed to look like this. All oh, she can like... eat is Roman noodles. <laughs> Ramen. Speak on Tia Day. <laughs> Don't you know Very that. day. We are talking got, about the Have you guys been in the Vista. cooking sherry again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. What did, what did you put? What was in the scotches, huh? What was in the scotches? Scotch. We got these guys crazy. Can, can we get back to the story of the Buena Vista? Yeah. yeah. So Buena Vista was developed by the team of guys uh, that were part of the Habanos. Uh, so I think you should tell everybody what, what that means. Habanos is the company that handles the distribution worldwide of the Cuban cigars. Now, do you know what street they're located on in Havana? Actually, I don't. I do. Spurs. No. Eighth <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> <laughs> The street is actually named after uh, an Irish person, and in in Spanish they pronounce it O'Reilly Street, but it's really O'Reilly Street. Okay. And that is the really? Oh, yes. Like Bill O'Reilly. No, really? <laughs> yes, really. Like Bill O'Reilly. Yes. <laughs> and it's in Old Havana. It's the headquarters of Cuba Tobacco mm -hmm. and and Habanos. Cuba Tobacco is the manufacturer. Habanos is the distribution arm. Uh, please continue. Yes, sir. So they decided to put this uh, project, and the company was based in, in Geneva, in Switzerland. And uh, they developed the whole thing between 2009 and 2011. They presented the product to the U.S. market in 2011. And due to some legal issues with the Cuban government, uh, the brand has to be stopped and uh, not distributed anymore. So these beautiful cigars were made in the Dominican Republic, they has been aging. They have been aging since 2000. I will say March 2011 uh, until like March this year in the uh, Dominican Republic in the Santiago in one of the well-known factories, just in the aging room, sitting there for the last three years until they could solve their legal issues to be able to market the cigar. Uh, the box itself is a beautiful packaging and is made by one of the makers of the high-end humidors in uh, Spain. It's called Humidif in Barcelona. So the box itself, I would say, costs about $15 a piece. Unbelievable, the box. The box is beautiful. 
and uh, it's boxes of 10 cigars. It's a medium to, mild to medium, you know, we'll say yes. the, in, the, in the blend. The very consistent, very nice, very easy going uh, uh, smoke. But again, keep in consideration, these cigars were made 2010 and they have been aging and beat for four years. So you are into a trade. It's a very nice, well-aged, rounded uh, uh, cigar. And again, since uh, March this year, they gave us the green light to put the cigars in the market, and uh, we were able over here to work out uh, with, with Cigar Cigars to have the cigars available for the holidays at a great, great discounted price. The original retail price point of these cigars were about uh, $10 a cigar, and uh, we're selling at what price? In the 5 and $6 range. Perfect. And it's... Uh, we're not making the cigars anymore, so what you have is what you get, so yeah. you should give it a try, and it's a great gift item for these holidays. Thank you. Yeah, this, and I just want to put this disclaimer in it. Uh, even though the Cuban connection certainly is there all around this, and Renee's being very kind, he can't get into all the where's and what for's in this whole deal. Uh, there is no Cuban tobacco in this cigar. At all, no, 100%, no, 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 no Cuban tobacco. Right? Absolutely. No Cuban tobacco. No Cuban tobacco at all. Yeah, it's because it says Ecuadorian in Dominican. Yeah, I just, well, you know, I just want to make sure everybody understands. No, absolutely. When I took over in the, in the project for the distribution of these cigars in the U.S., that was my main concern, to make sure that there was no Cuban tobacco, because pretty much everybody behind this was part of the Havana's team that it was concerned to have the products in the U.S. So, yes, after testing and putting to the connoisseurs about Cuban tobacco, I can assure that is there is no Cuban tobacco. And no animals were harmed in the production <laughs> of cigars. But, but, even you know, the great Cuban rollers, level seven, you know, Cuban rollers, great construction, great cigars, and you will see in the in the, the way that cigar smokes, the draw, everything is perfect on on that one. So is made with the whole uh, philosophy of the Habanos and the Cuban cigar makers. But everything was made in the Dominican Republic, but you know, Dominican fillers and binders, and an Ecuador. How in the world does a nice, fine young gentleman from Colombia get mixed up in these kinds of deals? <laughs> I like, know it's a long story, right? Like I told you, you know, it's in like a couple of shows before. I behave like Switzerland in this uh, You're neutral. <laughs> neutral, neutral with everybody, and this cigar happened to be being distributed by the Switzerland company. Yes, so, right. <laughs> by a Swiss company. Okay, that's why there's no Cuban tobacco in this cigar at all. Um, but yes, uh, especially when I see something extremely good in the market, and. Um, and that I think that it has a great potential because of the construction, the packaging, yeah. the blend. I always try to make sure that I secure these deals you know, to have it for our friends. Yeah, I'm glad we're your friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's time to go around the panel and get a first observation. Got very. Uh, you can tell it's been aged for a while. Yeah. It's it's very smooth. I'll almost say buttery. It's like coating my the, the, it's coating my entire tongue, and I'm getting a real sweetness from it too. This is this is fantastic. Paul. I know that there's no Cuban tobacco in it. No, but, none. But, but <laughs> none. There's a sweet spiciness to it that I associate with Cuban tobacco. <laughs> that's me. Saying. You ask my opinion. That's my opinion. Well, now I want to get a real opinion. T. I agree. With, um, somebody somebody down, around. Somebody there. down there. Yeah. Um. Get me. <laughs> <laughs> it must, having a bad day. It must be that side of the table or something, but I can't draw through this cigar. Will you see that? Really? Yeah. It must be the cigar. Could be. Could be. Oh, it could be you. Could be me. Maybe, maybe, you don't have enough sucking maybe power. I don't know how to, to smoke a cigar. I have sucking. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. I want to hear the you end have, of that sentence. You have second <laughs> issues. Oh, you want to make it, you know? Does Woody that's come right. in, Paul? Why not? Just walk take in there and get you one. Take come out of the um, No, that's, I mean, that's all right. Life's I'm getting short. a I'm getting a woodsy taste out of it. <laughs> I'm getting a woodsy taste out of it. Um, I do get a little bit of sweetness to it. So. Get two. Thank you. 
equal than art today. Thank you. I'm off. User error. We'll have yeah, a I, corrected. I don't know what I'm doing. We'll have a corrected. Interest. I actually, when I snipped it, I. I she doesn't know how to do it. I don't like guillotines. That's After why. all these years. I finally admit the reason why I don't like a guillotine cut because I don't uh, know how to operate it. <laughs> you have sucking issues. <laughs> That's why I don't. Honestly, now this is better. It had to be just a cigar. Yep. It happened. Yeah, well, it's my turn. It yeah. happened. Even, 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 even the Cubans make product. It made, made mistakes. Yeah, but the Cubans, ah, the Cubans yeah. had nothing to do with this except. No, it's completely different. I mean the different. rollers. Meaning the rollers. The rollers oh. are Cuban. Uh, I'm really getting hard. now. No, this now is that different. Can smoke it. This is different. I'm getting actually a chocolatey taste. Yes, yes. So Wait, well, my turn. Yeah. yeah, those were supposed to explode. You didn't, you didn't smoke them long enough for the surprise to come out. We couldn't smoke it long well, enough. Well, when I put the little charge yeah, in. Yeah, there it. is a chocolatey taste. Yeah. All right. Well, you can skip us. We'll come back. <laughs> That's they, better. They're doing their own show down there. Yeah, yeah. I, that I, is I think they, I think they've been enjoying the Christmas eggnog a little early this year. A little bit too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, as for me, whether that matters or not. Uh, I find a cigar very enjoyable, nice mild to medium blend, uh, nice sweet finish, burns great, a lot of smoke, easy to draw, decent cigar, really decent cigar. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. for the price. Yeah. Quite a bit of flavor for something this mild and smooth. Mm -hmm. It's different. It certainly is. No, yeah, the I only drawback, that, no. the oh. only drawback to this cigar. It's different. We're endeavoring to buy the last 3,000 boxes of them. Uh, and of course, that means 30,000 cigars. But once they're gone, they're gone. Sadly, you will not be able to buy any more of these non Cuban cigars. <laughs> we have other non Cuban cigars, too. Oh, that's what? right. We have a whole humidor. Yeah. Yeah. And a warehouse filled yeah. with them. I must have missed like the first five minutes. <laughs> you were sleeping. No, I was thinking. Didn't I tell you? I knew you something. I smelled something. <laughs> I'm glad you were driving. Burning. Yeah, they had you, the yes, they had you weren't driving. <laughs> <laughs> or your kid was in the back. <laughs> no, when the, when, old. when the cigar was put out on the market in 2011, it came with great uh, reviews. And yeah, everybody did. was talking yeah. about the, very highly about the cigar, and it was unfortunate that uh, the, the cigar couldn't. Um, because of the legal problem. Because of the legal problem, couldn't continue the distribution in the market. <laughs> When they came to me on March to put the cigars back in the market, they wanted to go with the same price point. Mm. And I told, like, uh, listen, uh, four years in the cigar industry is like an eternity that things yeah. have changed. Yep. And uh, we need, you know, to be competitive out there with the great products that are in the market right now. So that was the reason that I made the, the suggestion to go with a lower price, especially that there was no continuation on the production of the, right. of mm. the cigars. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind also that that box, the construction of that box, is the construction of a humidor. So by itself, it's a travel humidor. It's oh, amazing. Yes, yeah. such cool. a cool. That box is. I mean, the cigars are great, but the box is unbelievable. I read that the factory that. that produces that box in Spain yeah. makes the makes Cohiba boxes. Also. Yes, it's, it is true. Yeah. It is true. Yes. But I still have nothing to do with the factory. <laughs> I missed the first five minutes. <laughs> you were you were taking a little cat nap. I was thinking. You were thinking. That's dangerous. I don't know if you guys noticed when I first was trying to light it, then I burned myself. I'm having a bad day. Just give up. Users. And it's an odd number deer too. That's odd. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do, do after? What are you gonna do next year? It's all yeah, down see, We're going into the new year. You see that? I told you. Didn't I tell you guys? You're right. Just another week. <laughs> a little over a week. We're into. How much are the We're into sixteen already. How much are the boxes of these? What's that? Ten. Ten. Ten in a box. That's not what he asked. Oh. oh how much? How much? How much? How much? much? Oh, oh, probably five. around fifty, sixty dollars. I don't think no, they are. Think it's right there. Like, where? Over there, on top of the other one. See it? Oh yeah. Uh, He's squinting with glasses. Forty-four ninety-five. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal. price. Okay. That's a great deal for the box. You're not supposed why we to be surprised. <laughs> Was he surprised? Yeah, really. <laughs> I priced him. No, because it, 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 it's the end. It's the end of the era of these non-Cuban cigars. Oh my God. So I mean. You know, we got a ton of them in. We'll move a ton of them out, make our little couple pennies a, a cigar, and move on to the next non-Cuban deal. 
Absolutely. Do you, do you want to make any comment about the band? Yeah, I it's saw really them play pretty. in uh, Barcelona. They were there. Great. <laughs> Did great you crowd. actually? Uh, have you ever crowd. seen Buena Vista Club? Play? Yes, I have. Club. I've seen oh, I would love Club. to see that. I didn't see it with uh, the famous guy. Compay Segundo. Yeah, I, Sonia Henny? That's Sonia. Oh, my Henny. God. No, Compay Segundo. Yeah, I didn't see it. Uh, That's one of the CDs we play in the store. Yes, 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 yes. But I did see, uh, I did see Barcelona. What a beautiful, beautiful. Have you ever been there? Barcelona. Oh, has anybody been to Barcelona? Art, really? Oh my God! What a, I mean. No, no. Talk about a European in city in well, Spain. It's one of the great cities oh, of, Europe. of the world. Absolutely. I mean, it's just so cosmopolitan, so rich in it's like not so much in ancient history, in but just rich. Just, what a. Oh. And it's up towards the Catalan or the Basque region, and, and it's just a different world. You have southern Spain, and then you have the north. Which you know, is they're, like, they're trying to secede from Spain. Yes, yes, yes. Well, well Barcelona? No, the, well, the whole Catalonia. Well, okay. Okay. Catalonia. Okay. Catalonia is a, it, it's a different, different language. Different language. It's not yeah. even Spanish. Yeah. They speak uh, Catal Catalan. Yeah. Well, is it like a version of Spanish, or is it like a yeah, combination like, of French like, and Spanish? Kind of like Portuguese. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's actually where Ana Maria's from. Okay. Yeah, seriously. Barcelona. With that. Well, she's not. She's from the Catalan. She's not from actual Barcelona, but Catalan. Oh, hi, folks. <laughs> Nobody knows who Ana Maria is. Yeah, I know. But she gives us all our inspiration and good ideas. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm loving this cigar. <laughs> yeah, they can draw through it. It's you, actually you, a good cigar. You guys just keep talking. I'm just going to enjoy this now. I want to hear about cigar. the inflatable sheep. The oh, sheet. please. Do you have Who are you asking? Ken, oh, Kenny you? got, remember, we got, Kenny got uh, an inflatable sheet for his birthday one year. Oh, remember? yes, I do remember. Really? <laughs> yes. Long time ago. <laughs> yes. That's even better than a donkey in an executioner's mask. Nothing's better than a donkey in an executioner's mask. Well, well there you have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> The 40,000 of you at home <laughs> watching this and wondering, what the hell is going on? No, they're not. They Thank God they're out shopping. Yeah, they're probably shopping. Well, I hope they're in the stores. Who's minding they're, the stores? They're, they're shopping here. for Christmas gifts and, and uh, cigar gifts especially. Oh, Jerry Lewis. I have a couple minding in the Jerry store. Lewis. Oh, Jerry wait a minute. I think Jerry we need to, to talk about this and rate it. Start with Scott. Very consistent, um, smooth, buttery. Fantastic flavor. There's a there's a, a flavor in there that I can't describe, but it's close to cocoa. But it, it, it's a it's a or maybe espresso, but it's a very sweet flavor. Is it's it chocolate a, nougat. Is it a nougat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a nougat. Paul, oh, uh, I actually like this cigar a lot. You're like shocked. <laughs> Why? It's not your strength profile. It's not my strength profile, but you know I'll take a really good flavor. Over a lot yes. of strength oh, any, any day, day. Yeah. Yeah. and this is a really good flavor. I what, like what, what did you say? The the strength? Would you say mild? I was a yeah. mild to medium. Yeah. I, I would mild. go with the. I go right down the middle, medium. Yeah, yeah. It's Tea? not bland. That's for sure. It does have a different taste to it. I can't put my can't describe it. It's it's definitely a different taste. Um, <laughs> it's not my profile. Um, a lot of it has to do with the wrapper. Um, yeah, you don't like the that going around. The filler. Wait a minute. A lot of it has to do with the wrapper and, and the, the filler. filler. Gee, really? Yeah. Well, it's got a nice that binder. Is, so the sure binder, the binder is great. Tremendous insight here. And, and the best and, binder and, in the business. Please don't forget the box. Yeah, tremendous no, insight. No, um, it's it's um Bite it's a well-made cigar. It's a good cigar. It's just not in my flavor profile. That's it. Rob, favorite. That's very fair. Now that I can draw through the cigar, it's. I have to agree with Scott. God help me. Uh, it's very very smooth. Uh, I like it. It's got a, it's got a toasty. I think it's very smooth. Scott's playing with the smoke. Huh? Um, it's got a, a, a toasty, chocolatey taste to it that mm -hmm. I really, really like. It does. No one mentioned the spice though. I did. There's not a lot of it. There, no. there is a little. A but see, I get a lot of it. Like a really? sweet Scott, put a number on it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a nine. Well, I like this cigar. I'll go eight five. T. Eight. Ooh. That's nice. What's wrong with eight? There's nothing wrong with eight. I just said ooze. I just felt like an ooze. <laughs> no, okay. I agree with Paul. Eight five. Wow. Five, uh, eight seven five. Just to be a little contrary. That's nuts. That's a nougat. 
<laughs> well, this as, down. We come, nope. as we come to uh, the end of our, I guess this is our Christmas show. Uh, no, we, next week. we implore you to Merry don't Christmas. Know, watch our Saturday oh, night show Christmas at 8 o'clock on the same channel. Uh, a lot of interesting bargains on that show. We want to thank you for making 2015 a wonderful year. Next week we're going to do a, the year in perspective. Uh, we're going to just sit around, smoke cigars, talk cigars, and just have a good time. And we hope you'll join us and have a good time as well. We're going to burn so the we want to thank our dear here. old friend, and, and more emphasis on the friend than old. For, for coming in, <laughs> thank you, my enduring friend. all this all these weeks. Thanks for coming, yes, every night. Thank, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll Always see you pleasure. soon. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So again, stay tuned for a, a nice presentation from Glenn Loop, who's the executive director of the Cigar Rights of America. And we thank you very, very much on behalf of all of us for making this a great year. Keep smoking, keep enjoying. Merry bye bye. Christmas. Ciao for now, everybody. Merry bye. Christmas. Have a holly jolly Christmas. We're here today with Mr. Glenn Loop, the executive director of the Cigar Rights of America. This is a man you should listen to. Glenn, <laughs> take it away. Thank you, Art. Thank you for having me on Cigar Time TV. This is a great opportunity to share our story with cigar smokers all over the world, literally, about what's being confronted by this industry, by every retail shop in America, and you, the consumer, and how you need to be a part of this process. CRE was created in late 2008, really as a grassroots movement, because this industry, for the first time, was on the political radar like it never bef was before, and that was the S-chip taxes. And all of a sudden, the industry was getting slapped around by Congress about uh, raising the S-chip tax at first $10 and $3 and got, eventually got down to $0.40. Cents. But it was the first real political wake-up call for this industry. So I joined the organization in, in uh, late 2008, and, and then we really got off and running in January 2009. I was just fortunate enough to be a, a political hack, a lobbyist in Virginia who represented the Cigar Association of Virginia, and I took one ride with Rocky Patel, and sort of the rest is history, if you will. And I've just I've been fortunate enough to, to be an advocate for this industry, uh, really using nothing more than, than the innate politics to, to really drive home the message that we are different. We are unique. And in that period of time now, it's been over 30 different smoking ban battles, 26 tax battles. And now we confront the biggest threat in the history of this industry. It is more mighty than any smoking ban, than any tax measure that can be passed by a local or state government. And that's the proposed federal regulation of cigars. Really, this industry was asleep at the wheel politically. And I'm very honest about that no, with, with, with consumers, with retailers, with manufacturers. And really, if you think about it in the context of history, it was really the late 80s, early 90s when we should have really been differentiating ourselves as, as yeah. an industry. And really, that's been a, a, a mantra of ours in trying to get legislation through the United States Congress that defines premium cigar, that defines premium handmade cigar, and says you shouldn't treat it the same way. So what I'm doing, I brought with me today a copy of the Federal Register that was issued on April the 25th, 2014, just a hair over a year ago this month. And this document is the most dangerous thing to ever confront this industry. Pre-market approval. That means that every one of these unique new blends that come out every year at the annual trade show, that boutique manufacturers such as on Cigar Time, uh, my friend Omar was here as an example yeah. of a boutique yeah. manufacturer, comes out with a great new blend and hits shops around the country with it. Compelling whether you're, you're somebody like an Omar or any of our multinational friends that are selling cigars all over the planet, having these blends compelled to be submitted to the FDA for approval before they could ever go to market. Right now, the FDA is 4,000 applications and four years behind on proving new products for cigarettes and smokeless. It could take years to put a new cigar out, and it could be amazingly expensive for well, the manufacturers. Yeah. So we don't know how any our boutique friends or our, our, our large cigar brands could even survive that level of re regulatory scrutiny. A lot of hours of lawyers. A lot of hours, of, and the estimate is, in this document, it says it could take 5,000 hours just to do the application process. Wow. If you have an attorney conservatively walking you through that process, it could take over a million dollars to put a new cigar on the market. Most guys couldn't afford it. We live, as my friend Jorge Armenteros puts it at Tobacconist University, we're living in a renaissance of cigar making right now. Some of the greatest cigars in the history of the industry are being made right now. And it's because of the innovation. It's because of the, the, the intuitiveness. It's because people that have great ideas 
ideas are coming forth. They're going down to Latin America. They're playing that magic with the tobacco to come out with these wonderful new blends that are on these shelves right behind us. And right now, we, we would stifle that. We would destroy it, in essence, by virtue of this federal regulation. So pre-market approval is front and center. After that is new user fees that are going to do nothing but drive up the cost of cigars yeah. at the retail level. Much less for the manufacturers. That cost is going to be passed down to the consumer. Oh, sure, sure. So new user fees on the industry is emphatically a part of this. And a ban on free samples where we know that reps come into your store yeah. and they're handing out every cigar because everybody's palate is different. And they say, I hope you like it so that you'll buy a box of them. Well, I'm sorry, that now becomes a federal offense. You can't do that. Folks, this is what we're confronting, and that's why we need everyone that's watching Cigar Time TV to be a member of Cigar Rights of America. We hope you go to CigarRights.org. We send you two great cigars for doing that. You'll get our weekly newsletter on all the political issues being confronted around the country and what's going on in your city halls and your state capitals, much less what's going on in Washington, D.C. We need people, as I put it at one seminar not too long ago, you're no longer a cigar smoker. You're a cigar voter. Yeah. You, if you've got a passion for this industry, you need to exercise that at the ballot box. You know, we were just at a cigar event with 6,000 people. You can change an election with 6,000 people. Yeah, you, you go to a big smoke in Vegas, you got 4,000 people. You can change an election with 4,000 people. I'm getting ready to write an article where I don't even think a person should run for president of the United States because they all have to have Florida. <laughs> I don't think a person running for president should be allowed in the state of Florida until they've spoken to the cigar industry. Yeah. It, every cigar that's on these shelves behind us here at Cigar Cigars came in through the Port of Miami and then went all over this country. They do. The South Florida cigar culture is amazing. We want to destroy that. My friend Sandy Kobas, that owns yeah. El Teton de Bronze yeah. in Little Havana, how could a little factory like that in the United States yeah. employing Americans, or I noticed you had Bobby Newman on the show not too long ago, and you, that Tampa factory yeah. that would be under attack. One of the last factories is the last factory left in America making premium cigars. Now all of a sudden we're saying federal bureaucrats are going to walk in here and regulate you like a pack of cigarettes, like a can of smokeless, whatever the case might be. We're going to treat you the same. And we get tired by the cigarette brush. Well, we do, and we spend a lot of time educating Congress about that, and we've done over 350 congressional briefings in the last three years getting that message across. And then at that time, 251 members of Congress have signed on to our legislation at one time or another, Democrat and Republican. At one point, I did an interview with the Wall Street Journal, and I said, we have to have the only bill in Congress that's got Charlie Rangel and Michelle Bachman on the same on the bill. Same, yeah. I said, we must be right. Uh, but, but of those 251, 72 voted for the original Tobacco Control Act which means we're getting the message across that cigars, premium handmade cigars, are different, they're unique, and shouldn't be treated in this type of a fashion by the federal government. And that's the name of the game right now. So again, we hope your, your listeners, the, the folks that are tuning into Cigar Time TV, go to CigarRights.org, become engaged in the process, fill out the petition to your member of Congress, and every state's got a page. If you've got a tax increase or a smoking ban on the proposal in your state, we've got a petition for you right there as well. Simon, so, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, this means a lot to everybody. Get out and do it because this is important. Not us, not just us who are retailers, but your individual rights. This is a rights thing. You have the right to smoke premium cigars. No matter where you buy them and how you buy them, you have that right. Don't let them take another right away from us. Thank you.